I'd like to regale a story about inner distractions from a snooker player who I knew quite well during my coaching days in the Emirates where I stayed for seven years. I got to know a number of players from all around the, all around the world fairly well. One of these players was Keith E. Boone from Singapore. Good player, uh, multiple century breaker, and we were in Jordan for the World Amateur Championship, uh, me representing Bahrain. And we're in the hotel foyer, and he comes up to me and says, oh, Nick, you know, can you help me? I've got a slight issue. And he, I said, what is it? He said, it's a mental problem. I said, welcome to being a snooker player. And uh, so we had a laugh about that. And then he said, look, I've got all these intrusive thoughts coming in, and they're really distracting me. And I said, I've been there so many times and spent 10 years working on this, trying to eliminate all thought. I tried to be like the Terminator. I was a, a teenager when I watched the Terminator for the first time. I thought that would be the perfect way to play snooker, to have no emotion whatsoever. So I basically spent 10 years trying to delete or erase emotions. It doesn't work. We're, we're thinking, breathing, feeling animals. And what I suggested to him after all the self-experiments that I'd done over the years and learning that I'd done, I said, look, uh, first of all, how long have you got? He said, two minutes, two or three minutes, because I'm going, the bus is about to turn up to take me to the practice venue. So I said, look, when you're playing, just notice your thoughts floating in and allow them to float out. Realize that you cannot keep a thought in mind, even if you wanted to forever, a thought or emotion. It's impossible for it to remain the same. So there's little point resisting a thought or emotion that you have as a distraction because you wouldn't be able to keep it there forever, even if you wanted to. So my point is, instead of feeling that we need to compartmentalize or control or break down or delete or wipe out or resist or smash to pieces these thoughts and emotions, treat them like thought and feeling clouds that come and go or birds that fly in and fly out. You don't need actually to do anything with those thoughts at all. You don't need to identify them or crush them or box them up or nail them to the wall. You can play snooker and be present and practice being present and focusing on what you need to focus on, even if you've got that noise going on in your head. The images, the sounds, the feelings going on in your head. Anyway, cut forward a day where he had his match and I was sitting in this huge auditorium right up at the top and he had this uh, match where it was on a table where these tables had been set up and they'd mixed all the slates up for these tables. They'd, they'd I think, stacked all the slate number ones together, all the slate number twos together and shuffled them around between the tables when the fitters came to fit these tables. So to play a black off the spot slowly into the pocket, you'd have to aim it parallel to the top cushion and it would swerve, drop about 12 inches into the pocket. And the top cushion was rotating through about five or 10 degrees. It was dead as a doornail. It was horrendous. You could put a ball on the table like that and it would just slowly migrate to the side cushion. That's how off level this table was. Anyway, he made his first ever 147 in that match on that table and uh, it was the least I could do to go down there and hug him after the match. A uh, snooker player hug of celebration and congratulation. And he said afterwards, that thought, that idea about allowing the thoughts to come in and come out was so useful, especially, he said, on the colours where the volume and intensity of the thoughts, we've all been there, right, on our highest break or a significant break or the threshold of a good match win, the volume of the thoughts increase, don't they? And the intensity. And he said, especially on the colours where I had a difficult pink with the rest and had to drop the black in, especially there, it really helped to know that it's okay to have all this mental clatter going on in your head. You can still do your best, like driving along and looking through the windscreen that's being rained on. You don't stare at the rain, you look at the road ahead 
If you stare at the raindrops, you are going to have a collision. So no matter how heavy the mental rain, practice looking through it and keeping your attention anchored to yourself or you anchored to your uh, um, what you need to pay attention to, almost like wearing a life jacket or a life ring in stormy seas.